So today's episode is about what not to do. All right. I uh, kind of came yeah. to this idea because wholesaling is actually simple. Like it's not easy, but it's simple. So I was making a list of like, you know, how can, how can we really like help people get really good at like wholesaling? And uh, I pretty right. much came up with like, you know, what is it? It's pick a market. Um, there it is. How learn how to run comps, learn how to find motivated sellers, learn how to find buyers, um, learn how to do it virtually, you know, and then learn how to close. And if we have to teach you how to cash a check, like we will, but <laughs> like, <laughs> keep it simple. But then there's a big list of shit not to do. And I see a lot of people always asking, like, they're too scared because they're afraid of what not to do. So, I mean, I'm going to let kind of Terry, I'm going to throw you three under the bus, man. But what are some things that come to your mind of what not to do when you're wholesaling? Uh, well, I guess well, the first thing I'm going to say, because I'm probably the most recent for us, what not to do is when you are getting your agreement signed from a seller and the conversation of holding money in escrow doesn't come up, meaning they don't actually put down a deposit, do not leave it blank. Make yeah. sure you at least have like a ten dollars or something. But I will at least put like five hundred dollars or like you know a hundred dollars, something like that in escrow. Yeah, I think hundred. But hundred dollars, but definitely do not leave it blank. It's just like kind of it seems a little unprofessional, you know what I mean? Because usually there's always like something held in escrow. So yeah, yeah that'd be that's one thing because I guess that's more most recent thing that happened with us. Yeah. So yeah, always have money in escrow. Yeah, I'll always put something down like at least a hundred bucks. But one yeah. thing that everybody should know is like. I get asked all the time, like, do I have to have money to start wholesaling? Oh, no. no, you can figure out how to do it without putting any money in escrow. And you can mm -hmm. put that you're going to put a thousand dollars in escrow in like 14 days. And then you can go and find a cash buyer and have them actually put the money down. So exactly. there's, there's ways around it. So it's not a big deal. But yeah, that, that was something it was in Tennessee. Like you have to put something down or else if it comes into the courts, like they're going to see you didn't put any money down. They're not going to take you serious. So that's mm -hmm. important. Exactly. Oh, what else? I mean, uh, my number yeah. one thing I want to say was like, what not to do is don't do, like, you have to do something. Like, so don't do nothing. Number don't one, yeah, exactly. <laughs> do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? How do I start wholesaling? Well, you fucking just start doing shit. Start calling sellers, start networking, start asking people questions. Like, you got to do something. You're not going to get any results if you just sit right. where you're at and just like mm -hmm. twiddle your fucking thumbs. You know, it's not Honestly, just going to come to you. That's don't think one. you need don't think you need everything so you can start you know don't don't not do nothing because you don't have like a cold call system or a text blast system or you know what i mean or like a bunch of leads set up you know literally just get what you have and get started so exactly yeah. start not driving for nothing. dollars start picking a market start going nuts man and just like yeah. making making something happen um so a, a couple things i do want to say is like what not to do is I don't really recommend anybody does a deal in Illinois. Like they have some weird laws where you 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 might get like a fine or you might get fucked up. Like basically the real estate agents or the lawyers in, in Chicago weren't making enough money. So they made mm -hmm. some weird laws. So you can't really wholesale there. So don't do that. That's one thing not to do is just, just go pick a virtual market. I mean, Chicago land, there's tons of deals and you can double close them. So you're going to have to call title companies though, and make sure like you're real clear that you can close a deal with them and then you should be good, but it just be better not to. Why, why stress out when you could just go to Indiana or Ohio or Wisconsin or Michigan and just start busting, busting mm -hmm. it out and doing virtual deals. So like, I think, I think that's one thing not to do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I can say another thing when not to do guys. Um, and this is like kind of when you're talking to sellers and following up, um, say the seller gives you, you know, I'll, I'll reach back another time or something like that. Maybe a lot of times they'll get your number and go market it off somewhere else and see what they can do with it. Or sometimes they just might forget. Never get off the phone call without at least having a follow-up date or time to reach out to them. So at least it's in the back of their head and the back of your head. And that way, when you do reach out, it's not like out of the blue, you know, it's something that they should be expecting or you have credibility of why you're calling them again. You know what I mean? So make sure you have a follow-up date or a time, you know, when yeah. and always try and build rapport. A lot yeah. of these wholesalers will call people and just sound like robots. Like you got to be yourself. You got to just have like a pretty human conversation. Cause that's, what's going to lead to being able to close deals with them. That's what's going to lead to, you know, creative financing and stuff like that. It's building rapport, having a relationship, making sure they remember you. So you, when you call them back, you can be like, Hey, this is Robert. Remember we talked about buying your house last week. Like where are we at? What's going on? You know, so exactly. build rapport. Don't be a robot. Um, right. And be a person, you know, just talk about sports or the weather or kids or, you know, fishing or whatever, whatever you can find to relate to them. Make sure you do that. So that's mm -hmm. a big one. Um, I feel like this is the obvious one. What not to do. Never give your number first. Yeah. You don't, never give your never give the first number. 
Um, because the first person who gives the number always loses. Um, unless you come like into scenarios where like me and Robert, where we text blacks and like sometimes people like we try to ask them questions about the condition and stuff like that, and like they're not even trying to in- entertain anything, they want a number or don't text them back. So that's be the only time when you give somebody the number first, where it's like, you know, if I don't give this person a number, then we won't have a conversation anymore. Because that yeah. when you're text blasting, you'll get those people. So other than that, cold calling, stuff like that, never try to give the number first. Yeah. I think when we're text blasting, like we do kind of want to know right away if it's even going to be a deal. So we we try and make them like a decent offer or we we do try and ask them like, well, what do you want to sell for? Yeah, you know? exactly. But, you know, whatever. When you're on the phone, they'll tell you, you might go into a little more detail. Like, what do you what do you try and say? Or do you have any like key things that you try and do to get them to give yeah. you the price first? Yeah, gotcha. So I would ask them about the property. You mainly start with kitchen and bathrooms. You ask them how, how those look in um, anything like the floors, you know, cabinets, anything like that. And once you know, they talk about that. You can say, okay, is there anything else in the house that might need repairs like this, you know? And then you say, well, no, with repairs, how much are you expecting to get with your property? You know, you kind of just like put it all in place or set it up, you know, for yourself. You know what I mean? Kind of put, you know, like I said, you know, I said how much to repair with repairs, how much would it be? Kind of like put the price reduction in their face, make them understand why they'd be taking less money. You know what I mean? And then get their price. And then you want to go lower than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I said. You want to get the lowest number and then go low to that. So yeah. Yeah. And I mean, stop getting deals in fucking rural middle of butthole nowhere houses. Yes. This is, that's not where you're yeah, going to be successful. So many are. people are sending me JV deals of houses that you couldn't pay me to buy or that even if it needs work, there's nowhere in the area that a contractor would be able to oh. get the, the nails to fix the house. Like those right. are not deals that are going to bring you any money. So exactly. Exactly. You know, uh, those are deals that you might get on the contract and then, you know, you'll have it for a week and a half, and, you know, it might be a good number. And then you find a buyer and then they see where it is. And then it's like, oh, I can't get a contractor out there. I can't do anything. And then your deal's kind of done. You know what I mean? So like I said, like Robert said, try to stay away from the middle of nowhere in places. Yeah. Where, like, go, go for, go for the biggest cities that you're, that are nearby mm-hmm. where if like, you've got to put your investor cap on, like, if I bought a house here, would I be able to rent it out consistently? Like if it's in the middle of nowhere, probably not. Nobody cares about living out there. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to live out there. Most of the people that live out there don't even want to live out there. So yeah. you want to find places that you, that are going to be good places that are going to rent, good places where your contractors are going to be able to fix it up, repair it, where people will be able to like manage the properties and stuff like that. So that's why we want you to go towards like bigger cities, more population. Um, but there's a good sweet spot where basically you can find really big cities and then just pick like a little place like 30 minutes outside and, and that'll have less competition. And that can be your little, you know, what do mm-hmm. I call it? Like a gold mine pretty much like where you can just find deals and, and flip them to buyers and, and make some money. So right. Find exactly. your good spot. Um, yeah. And then don't put shit under contract for like too high a price, like learn how to run comps. I mean, we, we still do it all the time just because we want to make deals and happen, yeah. but then you're just like getting pissed off because every buyer that you send over there is like trying to like, feel like he's like beating you down, but it's only because you put it under contract for way too high. You know, mm-hmm. you got to squeeze the juice out of the seller to make sure that it's a deal so that you can actually move that property. Yes, guys. The whole point of this is getting discounted properties, wholesale deals. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy, but you want to get that wholesale number so you can just move your property and make that money. You know, you don't want to get a property on a contract faster, but then not find a buyer for it. You know, take the time to get the contract you need for the right price. So when yeah. you do, you can actually move it. I feel like a hypocrite because like yeah. we, we just got tons of houses on a contract when we were first starting. And we were that's the thing. Like, no, that's the thing about virtually, though. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing about virtually, though. You don't realize it. I mean, most of the time or like half the time, whatever, you see the property for really is worth when you send somebody over there. You know, the seller is not always on 100% truthful, especially when you're trying to get a property under contract at that moment. You know, it's not like you're going to see it with them, mm-hmm. you know, so that happens. Yeah. Another thing I, I would say um, to people who are like, you know, just starting out or whatever, don't let the seller control the conversation yeah. um, unless you are building rapport and you're just trying to find out about them, get their guard down. So yeah, let them talk, let them say whatever they want, you know, to get their guard down. But as in terms of with a property, you know, you're the one doing the research, you're the one comping the property, you're the one looking at the numbers every day. You know what I mean? You know why you need the prop- the property at this price, you know, you're the one doing the work. So don't let them just get on the phone and kind of just control the whole conversation. And you've done all this work to, you know, to at least 
know what you need, know how to go into conversation, know the questions to ask. You know what I mean? Make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're asking your questions, you know, getting the things that need to be said. So, yeah. yeah. And then here's a really big one is like, make sure that your buyers are putting down like a large amount of earnest money. So 100%. don't let the buyer not put down at least, you know, 1500 bucks. Cause what happens to a lot of people, which is kind of lame is you'll have a buyer lined up, you know, you'll get them ready to close. You'll be at the closing and then they won't show up. And if they didn't put any earnest money down, like what's really going to keep them on the ball to show up? Cause like, then you're fucked. Like you're, you're at closing and you just look like an ass. Cause you're like telling the seller, well, I'm not actually going to buy your house. Somebody else was, and they didn't show up. So put down, you know, I, I think it's like 10% or 5%. But at least, you know, 1500 to 5000 bucks, and, and then that way, you know, you're getting paid either way, too, because if they back out, that money goes to you. Um, mm-hmm. And at least your time and effort will turn into something, you know, so make sure your buyers put down a big earnest money. We want you to put down as little money as possible. And we want the real buyer to put down as much as possible so that, that is they're committed. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's like a thousand dollars. It's like a must, a minute, no lower than that when dealing yeah. with the buyer, you know what I mean? And like. That is not a lot of money, you know, especially with these buyers who like they can put down five thousand dollars to ten on an earn, earnest money deposit. You know what I mean? Like that's the bare minimum they should be expecting and be okay with that, you know. Yeah. So, like I said, a thousand dollars. All right. Well, now I'm going to talk about some of the scary ones, all right, that I don't want any of you guys to do. But we're talking about what not to do, all right? Do not say that it's your house. That is how wholesalers are going to jail and getting fucked up by saying, hey, this is my property. You're going to pay me this much for the house. Like, don't be that guy. Don't be the shady fucking person. You know, that that sucks. Like, you got to basically tell them, hey, look, this is an assignment contract. That's what I'm selling. I'm not selling you my house. I don't own this property. Um, But that's where all these stupid laws like in Oklahoma and Philadelphia and I think Illinois are coming from is people are saying, hey, this is my house. Um, I'm going to sell it to you. And then they're going to take the money and run. Um, so they're like, don't do that. And then also don't use any sketchy, weird fucking foreign title companies. <laughs> I saw this in Alabama the other day, dude, somebody basically put down that the, uh, they had a fake title company and the people paid for the house. Uh, and then the title company disappeared and took the money and they lost all their money and they never got the property. So don't, don't do anything like that. Don't be an idiot. So yeah, Ooh, that's some scary shit yeah. right there. Make sure you call them up, have time. This should be a front desk person answering the phone to put you in front of a closing attorney. You know what I mean? Make sure you, you have that process every single yeah. time. Who you the know? fuck was that guy when we first were in Birmingham? He was trying to get us to like, no. like Chester or Charles or something like that. No, I'm not even going to say that. Guy because sucked, like, I don't, because like just <laughs> he might have actually been legit. Just because he sucked doesn't mean he wasn't legit. So I, yeah. I, I don't he, want to out him. I don't want to. I don't want to he he was I trying to get us to use his title company. Um, yeah. And then like, I don't know, he was out of country. And then like all of a sudden his phone just went off and he was, he didn't yeah, really exist. Yeah. <laughs> he gave us his title company. And then went, went out of state, went out of country. Like, like you said, and we can't even get in touch with him. Yeah. And he's then, like, I'm on vacation or something. <laughs> we, I was talking to another wholesaler in the same market and oh, they yeah. said they had a buyer and it happened to be the same guy. And that was just like, listen, he's just out here wasting time. Don't even, <laughs> I think, don't he, I think that's what him. he was trying to do though. I think he was trying to get us to use his fake ass title company company send the money to that whack ass title company yeah, i think so ghost i think i think that's what Honestly. he was trying to do so watch out for those people man that's that makes he already sense. he already showed us that he could go somebody because he yeah. went out, like he said that he went that he went out of the country and something like that so. <laughs> such a weird like, such a weird thing he sounded kind of legit but nah he was he sounded like no. he was like a little little kid right like yeah that's time. why we were that's why we were like skeptical at first yeah that's we're like we, this is too good to be true but, yeah exactly. <laughs> good um what else not to do? I mean, um, I had something like go when you're just starting out, like just do like at the mid, like just try and do something every single day. Um, but don't just start like hiring everybody and blowing all your money on different marketing things that you don't know how to do, you know, like start with the free stuff. There's lots of free ways. You can check out all of our videos and our podcasts. Like we're teaching a lot of free ways of how to get deals how to get used to it. And like, this is a real skill. Like this is the foundation of your real estate business, your real estate dreams of learning how to do this. So take baby steps, realize how far you've come and just practice by calling people on Craigslist, calling people on Zillow, having conversations with sellers. The more sellers you talk to, uh, the sooner you're going to get more comfortable. But if you just start like hiring VAs and start 
you know, yep. spending thousands and thousands on text blasting when you don't actually have the skills, like you're, you're in for a world of hurt. Like you got to right. start you, small and build. You don't want to be learned. Like you don't want to be learning and like experiencing things for the first time, you know, all in one, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you kind of, you want to know what should be happening. You know, you got to know the process before yeah. you kind of just try to integrate people into it oh. and stuff like that. Cause like I said, you don't want to integrate new people and be learning it at the same time. Like you can't correct, <laughs> you can't correct anybody. You know, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to be a mess. Real player. important one right here too, is don't sign any fucking real estate contracts. If you don't know what you're signing, Holy crap. I got a guy in like Facebook who's messaging me who signed to buy a house and the contract is not assignable. So he's going to have to do a club double close, but he's never done a deal in his life and he doesn't know what that is. And he also doesn't have a buyer. So the real estate agent's going to like fuck you up. If you, if you sign one of their contracts and you don't know what you're doing, like read the contracts. Like that mm-hmm. is so key. Like know what you're sending people yeah. and like, yeah, guys so like watch it. You're actually, like I, I'm like, yeah, that's, that sounds like a situation. Like guys, you're actually handling actual documents, having a property go from one ownership to another. Like you're doing serious stuff. So like, I, yeah, I would not advise <laughs> signing, you know, a real trick contract or something like that. Put yourself in a situation that you really can't handle. So yeah, I wouldn't advise it. Yeah. Like the whole thing with wholesaling is the contract is assignable. So mm-hmm. we're getting paid to assign it to somebody else. But if your contract yeah. is not assignable, you're going to have to get squirrely with it and double close, which means you have to have the money. And if you don't have the money and your contract is not assignable, like you're fucked, especially if you're in like some weird little city and you don't know what you're doing. So know mm-hmm. what your contracts say, read the contracts, even if it's like Chinese, like you can ask the title company, like, what does this mean? Title companies are going to really help you guys out <coughs> a lot. So mm-hmm. don't do that. Um, yes. They, your title companies definitely will help you out a lot. Ask them everything you need. Uh-huh. Yeah. So and also, don't use shitty title companies. That's a big one, too. Like, we did don't. fucking Crane Title and Mobile. Don't ever go with them. They seem cool, yeah. but they fucked our deal up. <laughs> you guys, like, guys, you, well, also, what not to do is don't get something on the contract, send it to the title company, and expect everything to happen by itself. Do not yeah. do that. Either. You got to call them. You got to be in constant communications with them. Um, yeah. yeah, and then the other one is, like, don't believe everything that the sellers tell you, like the, the liens and stuff. Like if there's liens on a property, like you got to wait for title company to tell you the truth. Or yes, if yeah. they say they owe a certain amount on the mortgage, like don't believe them until they send you pictures of like this month's like mortgage amounts or the title company actually does their search. So yeah, I think it's that. buyers are liars and sellers are worse. That's like, yeah. that's the- <laughs> that's, it, well, it's happened too many times. So I mean, it's sounds true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, don't don't even get too excited until title comes back. So, right. You know, certain properties don't. What um, else is some things like the big no-nos and people should not do? I mean, number one is, again, like you got to do something, right? And then we said, yeah. don't do Illinois. Don't sign contracts that you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Don't let buyers not put down earnest money. Um, you know, um, those are like the big ones. Always, always, um keep uh i would say keep some sort of leverage in your deals you know what i mean like if you don't really have a trust uh uh, you haven't built trust yet with somebody you're working with to close a deal or trying to find a buyer or something like that or just even marketing your property like always have something in your back pocket to where like no one can take the deal from you you know Mm -hmm. what i mean because there are savages out there who if you post your property or like you if if you post in the same property for a while and like you know obviously it seems that you haven't found a buyer somebody will honestly just go and Oh, that same stuff blow up and say, look, this house is not being sold. Um, I can they're gonna do your, your pitch right after you, you know what I yeah. mean? And get the house on the contract. So, like I said, always unless you have some sort of trust or anything like that, always try to keep some sort of some sort of leverage in your deal. Yeah. As well. Yeah. And, and always always stay on top of your deals. Don't don't get lazy, don't get complacent on stuff. Like you gotta mm-hmm. there's a lot of moving pieces. And like if you try and get off the ball, like you're not going to get paid. But if you get back on the horse every day, you put a little bit of effort, even if it's just making a call, touching base, you know, seeing where things are at, calling a title company, like do these extra things. If you want to make extra money, you know, like it's really important because like if your buyer doesn't close, if your deal falls apart, like in most cases, it's all your fault. Like you can't blame anybody else, but if you can put in a little bit more effort, you can save a lot of deals. And then this is a pro tip, guys. Like, there's a lot of lazy wholesalers out there. And if you see that they have deals, you might be able to call those leads up like a few months later and be like, hey, do you ever sell your house? And they're going to be like, oh, mm-hmm. no, this guy fell through. And you can pick it so, back yeah. up if you're motivated. Like I said, yeah, you can, like, yeah, exactly. 
So yeah. all, keep some sort of leverage. If that person did it and you see opportunity, you know, go mm-hmm. after it. You know so I mean? it goes both ways. But yeah, when you're posting on Facebook and Craigslist, your properties, maybe leave like a number out or just put the street and like the details. And if they want more information, they have to contact you. That way people won't steal your stuff. But I mean, it, yeah. do, it doesn't happen all the time, but it, it could happen. So it's a good one to mm-hmm. watch out for. Um, as well, guys, when you are marketing your properties and you want to send people over there, oh, yeah. try to talk to the person as well. You know, get a feel for the person who's going by to see the property because that the, you're sending them to someone else's home. You know what I mean? And that you're not, and if you're doing it virtually, it's not, you're never going to go to that property. You know what I mean? So you just want to make sure they don't do anything to the seller's home or, or mess up anything, you know, just try to get as much information on them as possible. Try to make sure that they're a good, genuine person or just an actual buyer and then send them over there. You know what I mean? You don't want to, cause we, I've had the, you know, misfortune of, you know, sending somebody People over to the and- house going and clogging to toilets or whatever and like clogging toilets leaving lights on or like you know stuff like that like not treat the house as if they would want their house treated you know so yeah kind of just kind of give that you know impression to them yeah another thing for buyers is have them send you proof of funds like if they got a lot of money then they're probably not going to do too much weird shit like they're actually just looking to buy houses so that'd be another key thing for buyers is make them put down a large amount and then have them send you proof of funds so that you know like they're a legit buyer and also right Always be focusing on two things, the mo- finding more motivated sellers and finding more cash buyers. Like we got two customers. You got to always be focusing on both those, keeping your relationships, networking, you know, network with other more experienced wholesalers, network with real estate agents, you know, talk to everybody that you can that comes in like three feet of you about your real estate business. And maybe you'll meet some new people um, and squad up, you know, like it, that's kind of like a big thing. Like, I think we have an email at the bottom. Um, it just says, you know, JV Bears or whatever. Yes, JV Bears Real Estate if you want to JV with us. Um, and yeah, then if you want to like squat up with us and talk to us, you can always send us a message on Facebook or YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, all those places. We're everywhere. So yeah, you can get a hold of us. If you're, if you're, if you're wholesaling virtually, and like you, if you want your deals to be moved or looked at or help, guys, just reach out. We're doing it every day. You know, yeah, we're, we're j- literally, we're just like you. You know what I mean? We just started. We just already started. So, you know what I mean? Just, just reach out and like help yourself to get ahead. Yeah, we'll help you close some deals. We got some ninja stuff that's working. Yeah, um, this is, but, uh, yeah, go ahead. Another thing is like, if you find something that works, like if you got your first deal from driving for dollars, like fucking drive for dollars more. Like that's it works. That's, yeah, that's, that's you. That's, that's, you. that's, that's you. you. That's your way to be. If it worked from text yeah. messaging, if it was from Facebook, Craigslist, Zillow, like if it works, like don't, don't fuck it up. Like get really good at that one method of getting deals. Yes. And then build your business up from there. Because so. you might be the driver for dollars, but there's somebody in your area who who just does it virtually. You know, it's, you guys can team up. You know what I mean? And they might want to do something in your area and you have all of that. So like, like Robert was saying, like, if you have something that works for you, expand on it, you know, go hard at that. You know what I mean? And just, you know, get more deals. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um. Uh... I mean, that's, that's, I think that was pretty helpful for everybody. Like what not to do. I mean, also mm-hmm. just don't be, don't be a piece of shit. You know, <laughs> number yeah. one, don't be an asshole. Like, <laughs> be friendly, yeah. be nice. You're going to make a lot more money if you're talking mm-hmm. to people, being cool. I mean, we get yelled at all the time by people. It doesn't mean that we're going to go into the next conversation and yell at them. <laughs> like, right. So uh, you got to be happy. If it motivates you, if you're excited, mm-hmm. like use that energy, be focused, kick ass, you know, so, so much I, opportunity. Yeah. I was trying to think. Uh, Another thing not to do is stop learning. There's so much to fucking learn about right. this business. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, we're literally giving you tons of free information. Like, keep listening, take notes, keep implementing. A lot of people mm-hmm. are always like, "What do I do?" And I'm like, "Like, I, I told you everything. Like, what else, What do you mean? What do you do? Like, go pick a market, pick a way to find some sellers, and start taking action. But keep learning, keep hustling. You know, it's like Definitely. Yeah, don't, don't get lazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Otherwise, you're just screwed. Keep growing and keep building. Got, always be, yeah. Always be looking to touch up. There's always something like, there's always something that can better yourself going into the next phone call. You know, I yeah. learned that too from cold calling and actually like going and watching a quick video on wholesaling and I and like, and I was able to cold call better the next time. You know what I mean? It's just, it's easy to just keep learning stuff. You, you, yeah. you ask more questions, um, you can learn more questions to ask, you know, that, that gives the seller to, to speak more on a certain piece that can lower the price for you. You know what I mean? Just like, there's always a bunch of new things to help you out. So. Yeah. Another thing is don't fall in love with every deal. You might go to shit. Don't fall in love with any deals. Yeah, don't fall in love with any deals. Like, don't you never fall in love like, with any deals. Hope, we hope every deal is going to work out, but, you know, a lot of the times it's just not. <laughs> yeah, you're looking like you, you'll get to the point where, like, you're looking to 
you go from looking to get something on the contract where you're just looking for something to close. Like you're just hoping this closes. You know what I mean? Yeah, that exactly. is really like the, the fin- you know, the finish line. So <laughs> just make sure you just make sure you get there. All right, and then also don't not subscribe and crush the like button, people. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah don't. Come on, you got to follow our YouTube leave, page. Leave a comment down below of you what else not to shit? do. Like, you know, like, I'd love to hear what you on. guys have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do something. And, uh, yeah, also don't market your property without on a contract. I did yeah. that. One of my first one of my first times wholesaling, this is before I even met you, Robert. Like, I, I, had a, I was talking to this guy. He had, like, four properties he wanted to sell in baltimore and like i had spoke to him for like two to three days in a row but he just kept saying crazy prices and i was like eventually he'll come down on price so i started marketing the property with some with another wholesaler at the price i thought he should, he should come down to <laughs> and they were like um are you sure i'm trying and like they were like well you have the contract and i, I was saying a bunch of stuff they really realized that i didn't even have it on the contract or whatever like <laughs> I just wanted to be in the space, you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah just make sure you I mean, have nothing, it nothing's real until you really have it under contract. Exactly, like, you can be yeah. super excited about, oh, I talked to a seller, but that doesn't mean shit unless you have it under contract. Yeah. There's a whole other exactly. fight you have to do to get that thing signed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so do that. And then, yeah, I mean, partner up with people if you're doing virtual. Like, we're, we're in Tennessee right now. We partnered up with someone, and I think it's going to be really good for us. And then yep. I'm in Arizona. Terry's in New York. Like, we're basically going to just, like, kick ass yeah. and, and just keep taking names. But find a, someone who's going to be your boots on the ground. Don't think mm-hmm. you have to do it all by yourself. You know, there's a no, lot of people don't. out there that are interested, that want to work, that want to do stuff. So have conversations. Um, go out there and just kind of yep. go nuts, you know. We get – because uh, we, we wanted to go in New York – for, for some time now we just we just about to uh, get a partner the same per- same way we got it for tennessee we're about to have it for new york you know yeah. what i mean somebody i think we're gonna have a partner pretty much in like every state we're going after yeah. now because it just makes Honestly. everything easier i mean like i know it sounds scary when you're just starting out you don't have to have a partner but it just is better like and they know people yeah, that like, you'll never yeah. know mm-hmm. it was, you're one phone call away from like the next like, the most important person like sometimes so it's just like you know, the more people you know who's doing what you're doing, the better. Yeah. You know what I mean? This guy in New York is doing what we're doing, but he's not in our markets. You know what I mean? He's in his own markets. You know, he has his own perks, and we have our own perks that we can provide for each other. You know what yeah. I mean? So, bro, it's gonna be pretty intense. Like, we should we should yeah, like doc- document you going after New York, and all we all right. document going after Arizona, man. Like, those are the two toughest. Like, I feel like other than like L.A. Or something like toughest markets that are out there. It's like mm-hmm. I mean, Arizona has like every whole real estate guru ever for some reason. Yeah, like if you New go on YouTube it's crazy. and wholesale, all the videos. Are there. <laughs> Everybody's there. Jerry, Jerry Norton's here. Like every every single person is in Arizona for some. Everybody's reason. driving Dallas. But if yeah, I find him a deal, deal, I'll bring I'll bring Jerry Norton a deal, and then I'll I'll make it put go on the podcast <laughs> with it. <laughs> right. Come on now. And then New York Come is on. just super expensive, man. But. I mean, the dream would be like a creative financing or like a wholesale deal. And the other thing that I, we're going to start talking about too is like getting funding, man. So like if we found a deal for you in New York or a deal for me in Arizona, like I now know people that'll fund us to fix and flip it and wholesale mm-hmm. it. So that's another reason to go local compared to doing virtual. Like we've been killing it virtually, but we're going to grow. We're going to expand. We're going to do our own yeah. deals. And there's more money than the law allows out there for real estate people. So if you mm-hmm. find the deals, like the money can come. So we're going to, yeah, we'll come out with a video because like, if you guys are getting stuff on the contract and it's like stuff you want to buy, like you want to get into you owning your own business and stuff, like owning your own real estate property and stuff. There's people out there who will partner up with you who have the capital um, to, you know, make the project come true. You know what yeah. I mean? So We'll come out with a video for that, just strictly on that, so you guys can, you know, for the people out there who want to do that. Keep killing it, bro. Well, I think we dropped some gems. Um, I don't know. What not to do, you know? It's like, mostly just get fucking work, but what not to do is pretty important. It's just as much as what is to do. So stay safe, stay smart, stay making bank, 